In section 2.2, I will discuss velocity versus time graphs, how to interpret them, and how to use them to solve any problem involving motion. A velocity versus time graph can be used to solve any motion problem. Alternatively, you can use the uniformly accelerated or UAM equations that will be covered in section 2.3. For those of you that tend to better process information visually, a velocity versus time graph may make more sense for, uh, uh, for In section 2.2, I will discuss velocity versus time graphs, how to interpret them, and how to use them to solve any problem involving motion. A velocity versus time graph can be used to solve any motion problem. Alternatively, you can use the uniformly accelerated motion equations, or UAM equations, that I'll cover in section 2.3. For those of you that tend to better process information visually, a velocity versus time graph may make more sense for helping you to process a, a, a numerical motion problem. We'll start by discussing the meaning of the slope of a velocity versus time graph. Recall that the slope is equal to delta y over delta x, change in y, rise, over change in x, run. On a velocity time graph, the y-coordinate is the velocity and in the x-coordinate is the time. And you should recognize that delta v over delta t is the definition of acceleration. Therefore, the slope of a velocity versus time graph is the object's acceleration. You can use area under the curve to find the object's displacement. Area under a curve is defined as the area bounded by the curve itself, by the horizontal axis, and by two limits. And the limits on a velocity time graph would correspond to the initial time or beginning time and the final time or ending time for which we're trying to find the displacement or change in position. Since we're only going to solve problems that involve constant acceleration, and therefore we're only going to get velocity versus time graphs that are, that are linear, we're only going to have to find areas for rectangles and for triangles. Using slopes and areas of graphs is going to be a common analysis tool that we're going to use throughout the rest of the year. So it's important that we remember that anytime you have to use the slope, the slope is going to be used to find some quantity that's defined as the change in y over change in x. And the area can be used to find any quantity that is defined as the y value times the x value. In this example, we'll use the velocity versus time graph to find the object's acceleration and the distance that it moves. To find the acceleration, we're going to use the fact that the acceleration is equal to the slope of the graph. So we have to choose two points on the graph to, find the, uh, to use to find the slope. I'm going to choose 0, 2, and 4, 10 as my two points. The slope is the change in y. The change in y is going to be uh, from 2 to 10. So that is a change of 8 meters per second, right, from here to here is eight meters per second, and our change in x is gonna be from zero to four. So we can simplify that to be eight meters per second over four seconds, or two meters per second squared. To find the distance that the object moves, we're gonna use the area. You can divide this shape into a rectangle and into a triangle. The rectangle, which I will highlight in red, is a 4 by 2 rectangle. And the triangle that I'm going to highlight in blue is a 4 by 8 triangle. Notice that we're using the, uh, the formulas for area of a rectangle, base times height, and the equation for area of a triangle, half base times height. When you crunch the numbers, you can calculate that the area, and therefore the displacement, is 32 meters. 
As mentioned before, any motion problem can be solved with the uniformly accelerated motion or UAM equations that we'll cover in the next section. But you can also use graphical analysis on a velocity versus time graph to solve any motion problem as well. And this is most useful for problems that involve a change in the rate of acceleration. This doesn't mean that we're the, the rate of acceleration is changing uh, with time, but there's an abrupt change in the acceleration. And you can see this in a reaction time problem, maybe where, an, uh, where a car is traveling along at some constant speed, and then this brakes have to be slammed on. There's an acceleration of zero for an object traveling with constant uh, velocity, and then you're going to have some slowing down deceleration. So the, the acceleration rate is going to change, and therefore you can't use the UAM equations. Uh, you can't use the UAM equations to solve it in one go like you can with a, with a velocity versus time graph. So in this example, we're driving at 72 kilometers an hour, which is about 45 miles an hour, and then a deer runs out of the road 50 meters in front of your car. Uh, recall that a meter is about a yard, so 50 meters is about half a football field. This sort of situation uh, should be rather familiar for anybody that drives around here. Uh, 45 miles an hour is a reasonable speed. Half a football field is not unreasonable for, uh, for a deer to run out in front of your car. When you apply the brakes of your car, the car can then decelerate at a maximum rate of 10 meters per second squared. Again, this is a reasonable acceleration. This is about the maximum acceleration that you can expect for like a Honda Civic. Uh, so all of these numbers are pretty reasonable for a braking problem. So what is the maximum reaction time that allows you to avoid hitting the deer? So we can uh, we can pick out the important information in the problem, and we are going to use a graph to solve the problem. Before we start, we want to make sure that we are all in consistent units. So notice that the units that are given here for the speed are in kilometers an hour. We've got meters over here for the, the distance between the car and the, uh, and the, the deer. And then we've got the acceleration uh, rate that's given in meters per second squared. We want consistent units in our problem. So we're going to need to convert that 72 kilometers per hour into meters per second. And I set up my uh, conversion factors so that kilometers cancels out and so does hours that leaves us with units of meters and seconds so 72 kilometers per hour converts to 20 meters per second if we make a velocity versus time graph we can graph this motion so for some period of time we're traveling at that 20 meters per second and then we hit the brakes and when we start hitting the brakes, we are going to slow the car down and hopefully we'll slow down the car to zero before we hit the deer. We want to know what the reaction time is. So that's the, the that's the, the, the base or the width of this rectangle. So that's what we're trying to find out. It's the amount of time that uh, that we we take from when we see the deer at zero seconds until we hit the brakes after we've reacted. So we know the height of that rectangle is 20 meters per second. And so we can look for the area of this rectangle. So area is base times height. And we can also... Uh, use the area of this triangle. Now the area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle have to add up to 50 meters because that is hopefully the distance that we're going to travel. That's at least the maximum distance that we can travel and get to the deer with zero speed. So the area of the rectangle has to be 50 meters minus the area of the triangle. So first we need to find the area of the triangle. Now we know that the slope of uh, that red line is going to be 10. And we know that because the slope of the graph is the acceleration, 
right? Slope is, is equal to acceleration, and the acceleration was given as 10 meters per second. Slope is rise over run. Well, the rise is, it's technically negative 20, but that's the rise. So what, what is the run? Well, that, that, that's obviously two. So that means that from when we hit the brakes until we get to rest, that has to be a total of two seconds. So now that we know uh, that the base of this triangle is two seconds, we can then find the area. And the area of that triangle is going to be 20 meters. That 20 meters is the distance that it takes uh, from when we hit the brakes until we come to a stop. I can then bring that 20 meters over here to calculate the area of the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle is 30 meters. Remember that area, it really means the displacement or the distance traveled. So that, that, that 30 meters, that's how far that we can go while we are reacting. While we are thinking about what to do, oh no, there's a deer in front of me, I need to hit the brakes. So we can find the base of this rectangle. We know the height of the rectangle is 20. We know the area is 30. So the base will work out to be 1.5. And again, the base of this rectangle is the reaction time. So this is an example where we can... Um, use a graphical technique and the two facts that the slope of the graph is the acceleration and the area under the curve of this graph is the displacement or distance traveled by the car.